Kron Burner banned from entering the United Kingdom. Rumsmus Paladin is a far-right politician in Denmark and Sweden known for his anti-Muslim views and provocative stunts, such as constantly burning copies of the Quran in public. He recently planned to visit Wakefield, a city in the United Kingdom, but was met with strong opposition from local politicians and community members. Simon Lightwood, a member of parliament for the Labour Party for Wakefield, spoke out against Paladin's planned visit, saying, quote, he is a dangerous man that should not be allowed into this country. The government's security minister, uh, Tom Tugentat, decided to ban Paladin from entering the UK. Tongan Hat said in response to MP Lightwood's concerns, quote, Mr. Paladin has been added to the warnings index, and therefore his travel to the United Kingdom would not be conducive to the public good, and he will not be allowed access. Politicians and community leaders in Denmark, Sweden, and beyond have condemned Paladin's actions widely. Swedish Foreign Minister uh, Anne Lindy called Paladin's Quran burning stunt quote, a pro provocation that only aims to sow division, and said, quote, it does not contribute to the betterment of our society. I'm back. Okay, wait, wait hold on. Explain. So this hold is on. an interesting thing to consider, Armin. What do you think about this man being banned from entering the UK because he decided that he wants to do a certain form of political protest in that country and they decide to not mm. let him in um is this a freedom of speech issue like that seems like a freedom of speech issue it like, kind yeah, of it is, is yeah. it kind of is but at the same time countries are allowed to dictate who and who they do not let in their country this man is not a citizen of the united kingdom yeah so he has no right necessarily to be there inherently. Yeah. They get to decide who comes in and who comes out. Yeah, but to be banned because he said that he was going to do a certain form of protest is weird. Now, however, he does have a long and very divisive um, history. You know, this isn't, they, they could try to say that they were banning him based off of his prior record, so to speak. He has been to jail for his like, quote unquote, like racist and hateful comments or whatever. Um, but I, I don't know. It, there's something about it that doesn't quite sit right with me. But at the same time, I hate this dude, right? Like he's a straight up bigot. But burning the Quran itself is yeah. not. Yeah, a burning bad thing. the Quran is is not a bad thing. This guy is bad, but the burning the Quran. But you know, so there's I'm conflicted, okay? Because at the same time, uh, if there's two things to consider, when we say rights that the government has to protect, those are rights that the government has to protect for its citizens, right? So this guy is not their citizen. I mean, or residents, or anybody within your country, mm -hmm. the, a government can decide to not let you in. Uh, based on the type of person you are or the type of attitude you have or like any culture or your values or anything they do that all the time but that so at, looking at from that perspective like if this was a uk citizen i wanted to burn the quran and the government took any action against that that would be like we would be like oh my god free speech free speech being violated so but this is more tricky right um, mm -hmm. but at the same time we are talking about government action against somebody because of their expression Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is a violation of free speech because this is gov I mean when we we want the limitations on travel not to be because of people's expression mm -hmm. we don't want it you know or, or I mean it could be based on views and values but these are not the views and values that they should be is maybe if they said this if they had said that we don't want to let this guy in because this guy is a bigot then I would be like, cool, because governments are all, you know, limit who comes in if they don't meet the values of the country all the time, right? But if they're saying that we aren't letting him in because he wants to burn the Quran, then that's the problem. I think I'm, it's maybe, both, to be honest. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, if they had worded it like this is not about burning Quran, this is about this specific guy burning the Quran, then I would be like, cool. 
because they should you know most of the rhetoric like, has been about how he is a dangerous individual as a director okay i'm okay with i'm okay with it i'm okay with it because you know you filter when people come into your country <laughs> you do filter based on values so that's yeah. completely fine but here's okay, the I'm, thing I'm put, they're saying that I'm he's a dangerous okay well d is bringing up a very good point our lovely editor d she's saying they are afraid of the backlash because here's a bit of context armin you might have remembered how about two weeks ago we did a story about how a autistic boy was suspended from school because he dropped a quran and it was slightly damaged right and there was huge backlash and this kid got death threats right so that happened in this town of wakefield and it's become a huge kind of cultural culture war touchstone in the uk and so he was going to go to wakefield he was going to go to this town and mm -hmm. so a lot of people are saying okay because he wanted to basically shove it in the face of the muslim community that is causing all of these this death the death threats and harm to like this individual this this student right this this child and so that provides additional context as well because i think there might be concern from community leaders that if this politician this individual comes to that community to do that then that could be a dangerous situation but it wouldn't be a dangerous situation inherently because of his own actions directly because he i've i've never Grant, to it, my knowledge of this man is that he hasn't done things that are violent to others. The danger would be that he goes, he does his Quran burning, and then other people create a dangerous situation for him and others in an attempt to seek vengeance and backlash on him. So if yeah. that's the case, what what do you think? Yeah, I think this guy is toxic, and him adding him to the mix is not going to be helpful at all, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, if I'm looking at it from a legal perspective, I think it's uh, because I care about freedom of speech and secularism. I think it seems like the UK was within its is completely in line with free speech because it's not about just the expression; it's about who this guy is, right? That this guy is being, you know, uh, banned from coming in which is fine because you, a, gun, a country is not, you're not entitled to enter a country. That's not a right that people have, right? Um, and also from a consequences perspective, I think, you know, far right people and bigot people, they don't have the, they don't, they don't make things better. You know, whenever you, are, when you, mm -hmm. if, if, if you're looking at the situation and you have the Muslim perspective and you have the average people perspective from there, and then you, we want to come in and we want to be like, okay, so we want to ridicule the fact uh, that the reaction is so overblown, but without being hateful towards Muslims themselves and constantly try to uh, reemphasize that we're, you know, this is a specific thing that we're criticizing or even mocking, but do it in a way that it doesn't encourage hate, hate towards Muslims in general. And that is a very delicate and nuanced thing that you need to do and you need to balance. And then you have a bigot that comes in and that's just pours gasoline all over the thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, and more nuanced voices are never going to be here when somebody is coming in and just shouting and breaking everything all over the place. So that's why consequences wise, I think it's a good thing that he doesn't get to do these things, but. But yeah. I have a question. So mm -hmm. if he is, wants to go to the UK and peacefully and nonviolently burn the Quran in public, which might mm -hmm. not seem like that is peaceful and nonviolent to some people, but he's doing no physical harm to other people. And he wants mm -hmm. to do that in public in this town and the town doesn't want to let him in because hypothetically they fear that there will be violence against him or it will become a dangerous situation for other people isn't that essentially blasphemy law not law but taboo and also blaming the victim so to speak because he's not doing anything violent but out of fear of the actions of other people, they have now curtailed his expression. That's why it's important for me to how they're wording it. Are they saying 
what are they saying the reason is? I if if I if they I I would be more comfortable if they just said that this guy is an a hole. That's why we're not letting him in. Right? It's about the, this guy is a bigot, and we don't like his views. He doesn't match our culture. So get lost. But that you know, and that's completely in line with how people do immigration and you know visitors and everything else is completely in line so that's if that's the reason if they say like oh no this guy is going to come protest and we don't um, we want to shut that down and that's why we're not letting him in i have a problem okay that's not a good reason if they just say like we just yeah one of the people that spoke out against him one of the mps said mr paladon was previously jailed in denmark for his hateful and racist statements he's a dangerous man that should not be allowed in this country can the home security assure me and my community that the government is taking action to prevent this so that mp specifically references his prior record okay but record was he arrested just for being racist like is that and accurate I, don't, I can't remember the well this is denmark right so probably yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's not cool. Um, I mean, being racist is bad, but it shouldn't be a crime. Anyways, yeah, I think but they, they do that like... over there. Okay. You, they have hate, like, legit hate racist? speech laws. Okay. Yeah, remember right. we talked about, actually, I'm not going to bring that <clears throat> past thing up, but yeah. Let's look at some reactions from our live chat. Darko yeah. is saying the fact that burning a hateful book gets you banned from entering a free country is just amazing to me. What do you think about that, Armin? Well, I mean, I burned the Quran and I went to the UK. I was a yeah. see, actually, this is a good point. See, I, it's um I was never, you know, I mean, I don't think maybe you say he's a higher profile, much higher profile than me. But yeah, I don't think I don't think if I was like a hundred times more high profile. I still, I still think I wouldn't be somebody if I even with my record of burning the Quran. I don't think I would be banned from going to the UK. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I I do it in a way that is not trying to antagonize or you know piss off Muslims on purpose. You know what I mean? This guy is like this guy is hateful towards Muslims. So, I think like I think I I'm just gonna be charitable to the UK and say that this is more about the guy rather than the action. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be mm -hmm. I'm gonna be charitable today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think. Um, do you remember when Har Sultan was trying to get Ali Dawa banned from going to Australia? Yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah, so like I stood against that. I didn't think that that was okay. Yeah. So I feel like to be yeah. consistent. I should be like, yeah, this guy should go. She, he should be allowed. No, no, no. Okay, no. The difference is that if Australia <laughs> just decided to not let Ali in, I would be like, oh, that's fantastic. Okay, be like, oh, this guy is like that doesn't meet our culture. I would be okay with that. Okay, I would be like, Australia has the right to do that. I didn't like us encouraging that because that would backfire on us. You know what I mean? I don't want to. I didn't want us to be on the canceling side. I didn't want us to go and try to cancel people. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But if Australia's government just decided that, that, oh yeah, this guy, we don't like your views here, so we don't let you in. I mean, we didn't encourage it; they did it. I would be like, yeah, you got. I would support that as well. So I think it would be consistent. Mm -hmm. I am mm -hmm. being consistent. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. This is this is a this is a tricky situation. This guy is, mm. is he's the troublemaker everywhere he goes. Um, <laughs> Sasan is saying, burning the Quran is hate. It shows you hate Muslims, at least in the minds of most Muslim people. Well, that's not true, though. Burning the Quran. First of all, I burned my own book, Why There Is No God, which you can get for free. A link in the description. Even though it's a bestseller on Amazon, there's a link that you can get it for free in the description. I burned it. Uh, I, when I burned the Quran, okay, when people say, oh, this is hateful towards Muslims, all right, to make it very, very clear that this is not hateful towards Muslims. I burned my book right next to the book I wrote right next to the Quran to be like, well, if this is hateful towards Muslims, then I must hate myself as well. <laughs> like that's what he said. So, <laughs> so, so I made that very clear in that way. No, I mean, it's a burning the Quran could be because you hate Muslims, but it could also be 
because you are telling people telling you that you shouldn't be burning the Quran and that we need to ban burning the Quran or we should threaten people who burn the Quran and you want to remove the barriers for expression and that's why you're burning the Quran not because you hate Muslims but because you just don't want uh, expressions to be limited in any way so by the way I am I don't encourage people to burn the Quran anymore I think I have moved to just like what we did uh, spitting on the Quran and turning it you know apart I think that's a lot more safe, um, a lot cleaner, because I think that there's a lot of risk. Like if you burn the Quran, you might burn the whole house down or something. It's that dangerous, right? And I think it's even more, it's it's even more disrespectful to the Quran. Like as we discovered, like the reaction is a lot more <laughs> hostile. So it's it, and it just it requires a lot less equipment, right? You just take a, one page of the Quran and you just spit on it, and then you tear it apart and you just throw it at the camera. I think it's a lot easier to do. And it's a lot more effective. And mm, 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 yeah. Mm. Yeah. Armin, I love Armin giving tips on how to maximize the disrespect. We're, we're optimizing the disrespect. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it, it's, it is actually more disrespectful because uh, Quran burning is part of the history of Islam. Like people, mm. I don't know why. Yeah, like Muslims used to burn the Quran. That's how they get rid of some of their Quran. So like it's not like it's not i don't know why they're getting offended right now it's not it wasn't you know what's really funny so when rums's pilot on this politician went to sweden and burned the quran in protest of the turkey nato situation and messed up their (laughs) diplomatic relationships and then malaysia said that they were going to spend like millions of dollars um funding to buy translated qurans that would then be handed out in sweden right Okay, mm-hmm. I think that there's a possibility that all these free Qurans from Malaysia might end up in the hands of Ramses Paladon because this man must be funding like an Islamic bookstore with the amount of Qurans that he purchases and then burns. Where is he where is he getting all these Qurans? Like I was looking through photos and it's a ridiculous amount. I'm like, you're actually you're probably funding some Islamic bookstore single handedly at this point. <laughs> well, I have a tip for that. Where's my Quran? Um, uh huh. You don't have to. I don't understand why people. I have done a lot of disrespectful things to the Quran, okay? Mm-hmm. And I still have the one that I've done this to because mm-hmm. I don't know why people go when they want to disrespect the Quran or burn the Quran, why they just go all burn the whole thing, okay? It actually, just look at this. These are the pages that I burned or spit on and things like that. And I have so much left. Guys, just do one page at a time. One page at a time. And it's actually more disrespectful. You know why? Because when you when you take one page out, when you take one page out, right? You can see the Arabic wars of God. You know? So when you spit on it and you're burning it, that's a lot more disrespectful because the you know the words of God is like visible. When you just burn the Quran, it's, it's closed, so you don't not mm. seeing the actual literal words of God. So that's why I suggest people to just take one page out and do whatever you want to do with it. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but the burning is just so much more exciting. It's like ooh, a fire, you know. Ooh, fire. It makes yeah. it makes more of a spectacle in public, you know. Yeah. We that get man has done a ridiculous amount of things to that Quran. He like he'll he'll wrap it up in bacon and play catch with it in the park, which is kind of gross because then you're like playing catch with like raw bacon. Yeah, yeah. It's guys, it's it's do be more elegant, simple, elegant. What is all this mess? <laughs> There's an art to this, okay? Yeah. There's an artistry. Yeah. <laughs> Secular Sakai saying constructive vandalism. <laughs> <laughs> it's not vandalism it's my own book i i paid for this book and i of paid one's for own this property book. oh yeah okay okay <laughs> yeah and yeah when people say like don't burn their books i'm like i never burn their books i burn my book it's my book when you pay for the quran it's your quran i don't go burn other people's properties like what the hell like no it's their book no it's not it's my book you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.